Hi and welcome to our next podcast on medical statistics. Today we're going to look at receiver operator characteristic curves. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is re recall what sensitivity and specificity are because before you can really understand what a receiver operator characteristic curve is you need to understand what sensitivity and specificity are. We covered this in a previous podcast uh, but we're going to briefly go over it again. Then we'll introduce what these ROC or receiver operator characteristic curves are. We'll look at some examples uh, before finally talking about uh, the area under the curve um, and what the interpretation of that might be. Okay, so you might recall that if you have a binary test, that is a test which either comes back as negative or positive, one or the other, not both, um, then we can talk about that test's sensitivity and specificity. And the sensitivity was the proportion of those people with disease who test positive. The specificity was the proportion of um, people without disease who will test negative. Or to think about it another way, sensitivity, uh, what's the chance if you have disease that you test positive? Uh, specificity, what's the chance if you do not have disease that you would test negative? Uh, and uh, there are formulae for these terms and uh, they are written up on the slide if you want to have a look at them again. So a lot of the tests that we do um, aren't really binary. So you could think of somebody's white cell count. Well, that comes back as a number which can range over a significant range. And that's, that's not binary. It's not just a positive or a negative. But we often make tests binary by setting a cutoff point. Uh, so when we, we could say that somebody's white cell count is raised or somebody's white cell count is not raised. And if we think about the test in that way, uh, then we do have a binary test. And of course, you could potentially set your cutoff uh, for your test at various various different, different levels. Um, and so we can think about binary tests in lots of contexts. It could be a blood test, as we've already talked about, um, or it could be, uh, say, a symptom severity score. If we set a certain cutoff and call it positive over that level and negative below, um, or it could be some physical measurement. You, I mean, you could talk about somebody's height, and if you dichotomized it, then you could say, you know, people. Uh, who are over six foot, uh, we'll call that a positive test. People who are shorter than six foot, that would be a negative test. So there's lots of um, lots of measurement or lots of tests which in in themselves might not be dichotomous or might not be um, a binary test, but by setting a cutoff, uh, we, can, we can think about them in binary terms. So let's look at um, an example that I'm going to call a perfect test. So this test can uh, take values that range from 0 to 10. Um, and when we use this test on the uh, the well population, so the population without disease, this is the, the kind of values that it gives back to us. So, um, you know, the, it's nice and normally distributed, um, and these are the ranges that we get. If we do the same test on diseased individuals, then we get this distribution of results. Uh, so now, the, the thing to note here, the, there's a gap between... Uh, the results we get for the well population and the disease population, um, there's a gap between them, and so uh, we can set a cutoff. So we could set the cutoff for our test at seven, and then this would be a great test because everybody who is well tests negative, and everybody who has disease tests positive. There are no false negatives, there are no false positives. So for this test, with this cutoff, um, it's sensitivity and its specificity are both one. That's brilliant. So now let's have a look at a really, really bad test uh, right on the other end of the spectrum. We'll keep the same scale. Um, and again, this is what the test uh, gives us back, the values that we get if we test well individuals. But unfortunately, with this test, uh, it gives us exactly the same answers if we test the disease population. It's entirely unable to distinguish between somebody who has the disease and somebody who does not have the disease. Let's have a think about what the specificity and the sensitivity of this test would be. Well, it would depend on where we put our cutoff point. So if we put our cutoff point down here at zero, uh, well in this case certainly um, anybody with the disease will test positive, because everybody tests positive. That means that the sensitivity of the test is, is one, uh, but unfortunately um, anybody without the disease will also test positive, and so um, our specificity would be zero. We could move the cutoff of a test, put it all the way over here at 10. Well, in this case, the sensitivity would now be uh, zero, because all of the people with the disease will test negative. 
Um, however, um, the specificity would be one because everybody without the disease uh, tests negative. Uh, and you can imagine that if we put the cutoff point somewhere in the middle, um, and this one is bang in the middle, then we get sensitivities and specificity somewhere in between. Um, so for this case, the sensitivity would be 0.5 and the specificity would be 0.5 as well. It would be nice if we could think of some way uh, of summarising all of this information and perhaps of finding a way to compare different tests. Now one way of doing this would be to uh, write out a huge table where we list all of the different uh, values of specificity and sensitivity for different cutoff values, uh, but that would be tedious um, and difficult to interpret. And so another thing that we can do is to plot all of these values on a graph. Um, and the graph that we end up plotting is the receiver operator characteristic curve. Uh, so we've got some blank axes up in front of us here. Let's just talk through them briefly. So on the y-axis, we've got sensitivity, which ranges from 0 through to 1, 0 at the bottom, 1 at the top. Uh, convention dictates that the x-axis is 1 minus specificity. Uh, so this ranges again from 0 on the left, but that represents a specificity of 1 through to 1 on the right, um, and that represents a specificity of 0. Uh, now, the reason that this happens is, is as far as I can tell, just convention. Um, it, could be, it could be plotted with uh, just specificity on the, on the x-axis instead, uh, but convention dictates that that's not what we do. We plot 1 minus specificity on the bottom. Uh, and what I quite like is what's done here, where we put a second axis up the top, where specificity itself is plotted, because that makes it a lot easier to read off sensitivities and specificities from the graph. So let's start by having a look at the ROC curve for the perfect test. Uh, so uh, with our, our cutoff set at 7, in the middle of those two distributions, we already said that um, our sensitivity and our specificity uh, would be 1. Uh, so the way that we'd plot that on our graph would be that we would uh, plot sensitivity at 1 um, and 1 minus uh, specificity uh, would be 0. And so we get this point up in the top left-hand corner of our graph. Now, so what the ROC curve does is it plots all of the values of uh, sensitivity and specificity for different cutoffs. So suppose we were to move the cutoff up this way. Um, well, as you can see now, some of the diseased population would test negative, and that means that the sensitivity of our test would have dropped. And so we still have a, a specificity of 1, but our sensitivity is lower. So the point on the graph would correspond to something like that. If we were to move our cutoff point all the way up to 10, well, now uh, we still have a specificity of 1, uh, but now our sensitivity would have dropped to 0, and so that would give us this point on the graph. And we can do the same by moving down this way. Uh, well, now some of our well population uh, would test positive, and so our specificity has fallen. Um, and we could move the cutoff again, uh, where now we would have a specificity of 0, but a sensitivity of 1. So if we were to plot our receiver operator characteristic curve for this perfect test, it would look like this. And it's not a curve, it's got a nice right angle, uh, but nevertheless this is the receiver operator characteristic curve for the perfect test. So now let's think about a receiver opter operator characteristic curve for a really bad test. Uh, here it is, and I've initially set the cutoff point right over at the right here. Um, so what's the sensitivity for this test? Um, well, um, all of the individuals with the disease would test negative, um, so that would give us a sensitivity of zero. Um, however, all of the well population will test negative, and so the specificity of this test would be one. So there's our point there. Let's move our cutoff down to the other side. Uh, well, now um, everybody with the disease tests positive, so we've got a sensitivity of one, uh, but unfortunately everybody without the disease also tests positive. And so the specificity is zero. So that corresponds to this point up here. Now let's think about what happens um, if we have a cutoff point which is somewhere uh, in the middle. Uh, so with the cutoff point set here, uh, what's the sensitivity of the test? Well, um, what proportion of those with the disease will test positive? Well, it's looking at it probably somewhere around 60%. Um, and what proportion of uh, well people will test negative? Well, that's that's everybody the other side, isn't it? So that's probably about 
40%. Now those numbers add up to 100%. What if we move the curve over that way? Well, what proportion of those with disease will test positive? I don't know, maybe that's about 25% now. Um, and what proportion of those who are well will test negative? Well, that's the other bit of the curve, so that's 75%. And those numbers add up to 100% again. And we can move it again. So now, what proportion of those with disease will test positive? Well, yeah, it's only about 10% now. Um, and what proportion of those who are well will test negative? Well, it's the other 90%. Um, so I hope you can see that as we do this, the sensitivities and the specificities always seem to make up 100%. And that is to say that the sensitivity plus the specificity is always equal to 1. Um, and the points on a receiver operator characteristic curve which correspond to those are those that lie down their diagonal here. And so the receiver operator characteristic test for a really bad test uh, would look like this. Now there aren't many perfect tests out there um, and we shouldn't be using really bad tests. And so in reality, uh, the tests that we do use lie somewhere between the two previous examples. And this is a, um, an ROC curve, which is taken from a paper, which we'll uh, give you a reference to in a couple of slides time, um, looking at um, the receiver operator characteristic curve for uh, PSA, prostate specific antigen, um, in diagnosing men with prostate cancer. And you can see that it lies somewhere between that diagonal, which was a really bad test, um, and that, uh, that right angle, which was the perfect test. And so the question arises, how, um, how can we go about quantifying um, how good a test is? Um, or how can we go about comparing two different tests? And one way that people have tried to do that is by looking at the area which lies under the ROC curve. So... Um, here are those three ROC curves that we've seen so far reproduced again. At the top we have our perfect test and you can see uh, that the area under this curve is just the area of a square with side length 1, uh, so that has an area of 1. Uh, the area under our perfectly bad test um, is just half of that, so it's, it's 0.5. Um, and if you were to work it out, then the area under the curve for the PSA test was 0.68. So here are some more receiver operator characteristic curves. We've seen the red one already and the other two also look at um, PSA um, as a test for diagnosing prostate cancer but in slightly different contexts. Now the disclaimer to this is that um, if you are interested in the use of PSA for diagnosing prostate cancer uh, don't just take this graph at face value. Have a look at the paper and read a bit more widely about it. But we're going to use this graph for illustrative purposes here. Okay, so the red line, uh, I guess the first thing to say um, is to, to give you a bit more information about prostate cancer so you can understand the test. Uh, the grading of prostate cancer uh, is on what's called the, the Gleason scale um, and uh, prostate cancer can have a Gleason grade of 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10. Uh, 6 being the lowest grade obviously and, and 10 being the, the highest or the more aggressive end of the scale. Uh, so there is no Gleason 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It starts at 6. So the red line then um, is thinking about PSA when a true positive would be an individual who has a raised PSA um, and then is found to have prostate cancer, any prostate cancer. So Gleason 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10 prostate cancer. And a true negative would be somebody who does not have a raised PSA and who is found not to have prostate cancer. And that's the red ROC curve. Uh, the area uh, under that curve we've seen already was 0.68. The blue curve is looking at PSA slightly differently. So um, thinking about the test this way, a true positive would be somebody who has a raised PSA and then is found to have Gleason 7, 8, 9 or 10 prostate cancer, uh, whereas a true negative would be an individual who does not have a raised PSA um, and is found to have either no prostate cancer or Gleason 6 prostate cancer. So the, uh, the test which is represented by the blue line is only interested in prostate cancers of Gleason grade uh, 7 or above. And you can see that the area under this curve is, is higher, it's 0.78. And then the green line is similar again, so it's looking at PSA um, where we're interested 
in finding uh, Gleason 8 or other prostate cancers. So a true positive in this case would be somebody who has been found to have a raised PSA um, and then goes on to be found to have Gleason 8, 9 or 10 prostate cancer. And a true negative would be somebody without a raised PSA um, who was found to have either no prostate cancer or Gleason 6 or Gleason 7 prostate cancer. And you can see that again, the area under this green receiver operator characteristic curve is 0.83. Um, and so it looks as if um, PSA uh, performs better as a test for these higher grade cancers. That's what this uh, graph seems to tell us. And there are some people that have tried to put um, an interpretation on the area under the curve. So we've already said that the area under the ROC curve, uh, when it's 1, um, is what you get when you have a perfect test, and that if you have a, a worthless test, which is no better than flipping a coin, then the area under the curve is 0.5. Um, and so some people have put these descriptors on different values in between those, ranging from an excellent test through to a good, a fair, or a poor test. Suppose you want to compare two tests. You've got um, a test uh, represented by the red dot on the graph here, which has a sensitivity um, of 0.9 and a specificity of 0.5 uh, for some cutoff that, you, that you're using for it. Um, or you have the green test, which has a sensitive, sensitivity of 0.8 and a speci specificity of 0.7 uh, for the cutoff that you're using. Uh, you want to figure out which one's better. Well, you could say, well, the red test probably better, isn't it? It's got a really high sensitivity. Uh, admittedly, its, its specificity isn't that good, but that is really quite a good sensitivity. Um, or perhaps you could say, actually, the green test, that's performing. It's an all-around pretty good test, isn't it? Sensitivity of 0.8, specificity of 0.7, that's pretty good. Well, you might, be, might not be surprised that, given this is a podcast on receiver operator characteristic curves, that one way of comparing these two tests would be to draw the curves for them. Um, and you could find that they're something like this. And so you can see that the green test is, in fact, the better one. Um, because the area under its receiver operator characteristic curve um, is better. Um, and by changing the cutoff point that you use, you could um, get it to outperform the red test in both sensitivity and specificity as well. It might be that when you uh, draw your ROC curve that it looks something like this blue curve. And, you know, theoretically, the two tests could in fact be the same test, just with a different cutoff point. Um, and so I hope you can see that uh, by looking at these ROC curves, you can get a, a better picture of, um, of how tests are performing. Okay, so to summarise, what we've gone over this time is a quick recap of what sensitivity and specificity are for binary tests. Um, and then we've introduced what an ROC curve is. Uh, we've looked at some examples, both of idealised tests um, and then also some examples from, from PSA. Um, and we've talked about uh, the interpretation of the area under the con the area under the curve, um, and uh, how we can go about comparing different tests. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com, and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.